How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at Masters of Horror. This is Season 1, Episode 7, and this one's entitled Dear Woman. It initially aired December 9th, 2005, and was directed by John Landis and actually written by Max and John Landis. So I'm thinking he teamed up with probably his son. Um, anyway, John Landis, known primarily for a comedy director doing things like Blues Brothers, but in the horror world, we know him for American Werewolf in London, which is an absolute classic and is actually referenced in this video. So I guess um, the American Werewolf in London universe is London, Paris, the Dark Man movies, and now this random episode of Masters of Horror? Okay, sure, why not? Uh, anyway, this episode stars Brian Binbin, -Bin, Anthony Griff Griffith, and Cynthia Mora. Now, this episode of the show, I saw it a long time ago, and then I did a rewatch for this review, and from my initial viewing, I remember the basics of the plot, but I also remembered not really getting it, and I was curious if doing this rewatch would help me out and I would get something more from it. But sadly, no, I still, like, this episode definitely feels hollow and underdeveloped. Uh, we talked about previously the episode Jennifer. I don't know what was going on there, but I could tell there was something and it was something fun to analyze and think about. With this episode, I don't know what was going on, but it didn't feel like there was anything there. It didn't feel like there was anything to really dig into and, and really sink my teeth into. And I do really wish that there was, you know, something, you know, it's it's super underdeveloped. You know, you get the detective and he has to solve his mystery. And it's like the witnesses say it was a, a woman, but the evidence says it was a deer and mild spoiler. The episode Deer Woman is about a deer woman. Who would have thought? So yeah, basically knowing how the mystery is going to pan out without any real major revelations, it was hard to really care about the mystery. And the the creature itself, you know, you see the dear woman, but then you don't really see her kill too much because honestly it would look silly. But in turn, the horror scenes are significantly cut down so you don't get any mystery, you don't get any horror, and then you get to the comedy, and, I mean, this is John Landis, it it should be really good, but everything is just so clunky and weird, the, the characters are a little off, then most of the humor is just, whoa, isn't this situation wacky, a deer killing someone? And then you get, like, one of the morticians, what, no, hello, you don't remember my name? It's not landing. Most of the humor in this movie doesn't really land. But the thing is, there is so little going on with the plot, so little going on with the mystery. And, and, and it's really, you wonder, what is this episode trying to be about? Is it an episode saying sex is bad? Maybe. I mean, the, the, the woman is definitely consenting to it and they don't play the guys up as super evil just kind of dumb maybe that's what it's about though is it the simple message of don't trust strangers i don't know but the thing is they say later in the episode oh it's a native american legend it doesn't have to have a meaning some things just are and the thing is that feels more like a lazy excuse than anything if you want to do a story about things just happening and, you know, with no real purpose. You could maybe do like a a comedy like Fargo where it's like about the everyday life combined with extremism. Or maybe you could have the detective be super logical and then when he's faced with an element of random illogic, maybe that could be what throws a monkey work, uh, a monkey wrench into his uh, plan there. That, that could be what messes with his head, but that's not really what goes on. It just kind of plods along with lame jokes and 
you start to go, give me anything, make the creature more interesting and have more rules and, and legend behind it, or make the mystery harder to solve. Don't call the episode Dear Woman and make us guess what's going on better. Make it, you know, where we finally piece this together and we can't even believe it. But no, I just, I, I wish there was something to this. And it's just an episode that's underdeveloped. I mean, there are some parts that kind of work, but yeah, this is one of those, huh, what was that about? And then you move on and you don't think about it for years. It's not the best. It's not painfully bad. It's just undercooked, you know? Uh, anyway, let's talk a bit about the plot in order to analyze this further. No major spoilers, but I do want to do a deeper analysis section. I won't be ruining the end, but like I said, this is kind of predictable. But anyway, no major spoilers. Deeper analysis. Let's go. Um, we open up with actually a poor opening scene. It's kind of weird. So, guy in a bar has to go pee, he goes outside, he hears someone in a truck screaming, and doesn't really investigate too hard and goes back. This initial guy, he doesn't get killed, he doesn't find the body, why are we even bothering with this guy then? Whatever, we then get to see another guy who will find the body, and he sees poorly comped in like, green screened in deers that just fade away. A great special effect, and that cues him that there's a body there or something. And then we meet our main detective. And the main detective is, is sad and kind of brooding. You know, still try to make him wacky, but the idea is like he wakes up and he sees a picture of his ex-wife and he's all sad, but it's not really, like, yeah, his wife did leave him, but it's because of this whole other story. It's not a story about the wife, even though that's the only clues we've got so far. And it's one of those cases of a vague backstory letting you paint the character in one broad stroke, and then when you finally hear what it is, it is generic. Whatever. He's back on the force, but he only does animal cases. I'd rather be watching Ace Ventura Pet Detective if that's the case, but whatever. Um, they say that they found a mess. They think it might be a human body. Maybe an animal is involved. Go down and check it out. And the random officer that tells him to do this just tags along with him, because why not? Uh, the two have okay banter and a few jokes. The other detective is a fine character, but it's just kind of weird that he tags along. Whatever. They go there, they see the mess, and another detective is like, No, this is mine. Get off the case, and they'll fight over it for a, a little drama. And honestly, I don't know why he cares so much, but whatever. They see it's a big blob of flesh, and they talk to the, uh, the coroner, and she goes... He died in a state of arousal, and these are deer hoof prints and fur. So, and strangely, like, there's an inappropriate thing we can assume based on arousal and deer hoof prints, but it somehow never crosses the detective's mind. And it isn't what's up, but it kind of feels like this weird undertone there, but whatever. Um, they also get witnesses that uh, will say, oh, we saw a very, very strikingly beautiful Native American with them, and, uh, you know, we assume that the two are going to get together. And we get a scene, and it's supposed to be, like, so much of the comedy doesn't work, but he kind of spoofs other horror movies by having a theoretical couple that he kind of imagines what could have happened with these two, and it kind of spoofs B-monster movies, but... It never works, and it just comes off as kind of stupidly cheesy. And also, this is after he's told that the woman was a Native American, but for whatever reason, the theoretical couple, she's not. Maybe he's supposed to be a bad detective and forgot this, or maybe they were trying to make it clearer that this is all in his mind. It's just a weird little continuity error, uh, but whatever. Uh, we do get other scenes 
with the deer woman going around and seducing people and she doesn't talk but she'll like smile and nod and the guys will like lean into it and be super happy and that's the thing is I guess this is humor like oh dumb guys just going for what is obviously kind of fishy I, I don't know I think they're supposed to be funnier than they are and then the guys will take her away and it will cut because we can't see what happens next because no budget and honestly when you do see more later in the episode it really doesn't look good but in turn we cut out way too much of the horror segment so yay the episode's even flatter he'll eventually no major spoilers for the end but I do want to say underdeveloped as well because he rather than figuring it out someone just randomly basically tells him and then the dear woman will just randomly cross paths with him it, he doesn't really do much the ending is just kind of handed to him and then we get bad well I mean passable special effects it's just what's happening just doesn't seem it seems awkward you know eh, I, I don't want to cover too much of the ending not the best episode it's just yeah, no, it's, it needed something. It needed just another pass at this script. It needed someone to say, hey, this isn't working. Let's put one or two more solid foundation pieces in here and just nail it to something. It's like if the mystery was better, if the humor was more on point, if the creature was more interesting. I mean, when they have that line that ties it into American Werewolf in London, I like the idea that, oh, this is John Landis's universe of, of creatures, and I think he even did um, a vampire movie at one point. I would love to see something like this, but at the end of the day, it just feels like a wasted opportunity. Not the worst episode ever, just didn't really have anything going for it. A passable B-side, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyway, though, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Masters of Horror playlist. And I should have all the past episodes covered in there. My coverage of this show had been kind of spotty in the past, but I am working on finishing up these reviews in a, a timely manner, so hopefully more to come. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.